church. Welcome to Summer Sunday Night. It's like Summer Sundays, except at night time. And uh, we are absolutely thrilled to have you here uh, for the part two of uh, Pastor Witt's message. And I uh, really hope you enjoy it. This morning's uh, message was awesome. And this is the second part to that uh, message series. And uh, we really hope you enjoy it and have an incredible night. So I want to speak a word of encouragement uh, these next few minutes to you, to the body of Christ. And, and, and the, the word is, is endurance. Endurance. I, I want to I encourage you to uh, walk continually. Don't shrink back. Don't stop. And I just, I'm, I'm speaking a word of encouragement, endurance. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap, if we do not give up. If we do not give up. Listen, there, there, there's plenty of opportunity in this life, plenty of opportunity with God, plenty of opportunity with circumstances to just say, you know what, I, I give up. That, that is, um, you know, I, I think about, hey, when are y'all getting back to church? When are you going to start having meetings? When are you going to, man, I, I, I don't know. And, and I was thinking this morning, I even put a thing on the, on the Facebook live feed, we miss you guys. We miss the kids. We miss their voices. We miss the gathering. And I'm telling you, it's like, you know what? Then there are times when we're actually, here we are in this meeting. Is this actually worth it? And the enemy bandages, ah, oh, just give up, man. It's never gonna I'm just telling you, we will reap in due season if we faint not and we do not give up. Amen? This isn't some just uh, positive mental uh, attitude. This is beyond some just mere word of encouragement. I'm telling you, saints, we have been built together, put together to encourage one another when the days come and we feel like, man, I'm just too tired to go on. If you have not cultivated relationship and the time of peace and all of a sudden you find yourself now alone wanting to give up, See, this is why God places us in context of local church. This is why, listen, it's not a church that we go to. It's a family. It's a body to get connected to. And God does that in his wisdom so that when we feel like giving up, my buddy beside me says, no, man, I got you. My buddy beside me, no, I got you. And it's in those times that the grace of God to carry us when we would have quit. I'm telling you, anybody can quit. Come on, saints. I just want to speak a word of encouragement to you. You will reap in due season. Church on 68, we will reap in due season. Body of Christ, we will reap in due season if we faint not. Amen. Continue to press on to the high call of God in Christ. Amen. Times of, of pressure uh, really do reveal the foundation upon which we have built. Could it be that you're, you're here this morning or maybe you're watching online this morning and you've got some hopelessness setting in or you've got some giving up setting in? You know what? God in his goodness, he's actually revealing the foundation of, on which you've, you've built your life. And it's important to know that in these, these times when foundation is being revealed that we just simply say, oh Lord, I've, I've been building on my own education or I've been building on my own knowledge or been building on my own experience. It's time for us to build on that which is eternal, not the things that pass away. Amen. So a couple more scriptures I want to share with you this morning. Romans chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, look at this, but we rejoice in our sufferings. We rejo There's a popular message. Sufferings. I thought, man, if I give my life to Jesus, it's going to be all roses. You've been told a bill of goods. That's not, it's not true. We rejoice, he says, uh, uh, in, in our sufferings, knowing, watch this, that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Look at this. The pro progressive growth of suffering producing endurance. Endurance producing character. Character 
producing hope. You see, we get very destination oriented. We think it's always like, oh, God's going to bring me to this. And th- we think it's about the goal. Listen, it's not about the goal. It's about what happens on the way to the goal. The goal becomes a byproduct of enduring. The goal becomes a byproduct of not giving up. The goal becomes a byproduct. It's not the goal. It's not the end. It's what gets developed in us. Could it be that, that because we fail to embrace suffering that we so don't have any endurance? Could it be the the first sign of suffering we veil? So endurance never gets produced. So we don't make it 30 years in marriage. We don't make it in a local church setting. We go through one little dry season or we go through one little pressure. We go through one little thing. We just bail. The first sign of suffering, and again, that's personal. Somehow or another, you're uncomfortable. You know, maybe it's because we teach you guys on finances. Or maybe it's because, hey, look, we give, serve, worship, and pray. And you need to show up. You need to be. Maybe it's the, these things that the call of God, resting our head on the foundation stones of this place. Maybe that causes a little bit of uncomfortability. And instead of going through that, allowing that suffering to produce endurance, we go church to church to church. Maybe in marriage, it's like, we, you know, we, we, the first little sign of suffering, you didn't get your way. <laughs> You didn't get what you wanted. Well, I'm just going to bail. I'm going to find somebody who's going to give me what I want because I deserve. Hallelujah. I'm a child of God. I deserve. Maybe we don't have endurance because we've not embraced suffering. This isn't a message of, hey, look, like every season is a season of suffering, but having no suffering is part of it. Suffering in this world is, is, is part of the things that God, that man in his goodness he produces endurance. And endurance, if we, if we will continue in that process, we'll see that, that, and that, that the endurance produces character. Could it be that you're in a character-forming moment right now? God is developing Christ in you, that, that your character, you know, it, it's, it, that, it's your character development that will keep you once you get to where God is bringing you to. But if you've forsaken suffering... And you've not embraced endurance that produces character and the character producing hope. I hope, I hope this is encouraging this morning. It may seem a little bit backwards on, uh, on bringing encouragement. But I'm telling you, church, this is, this is the life of the believer. This is the life of the church that we find ourselves uh, in. Amen. Not shrinking back, but embracing wilderness, embracing pressure, embracing difficulties, knowing that God and his goodness is producing. Turn with me to uh, Romans chapter 15. Uh, Beginning in verse 4, Paul says this, he says, For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of scriptures we might have hope. Listen to this, may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Jesus Christ that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you, welcomed you for the glory of God. Think about this, he is the God of endurance, the God of encouragement. And may he grant us to live in harmony with one another. How many of you know, ah, oh, this isn't just, this is beyond, can't we all just get along? This is the church, the body of Christ, believers, born again, that by the God of encouragement and the God of endurance would allow us to walk together in such harmony, in accord with Jesus Christ, that together we may, with one voice, glorify the Lord. Amen? This, I believe, also touches base on the, on the collective worship expression. The God of endurance and encouragement grant us to live in harmony with one another in accord with Jesus that together with one voice we can glorify God. I'm telling you, the corporate expression of worship, not just me and Jesus in a closet somewhere, oh, I'm having my experience with the Lord, but the corporate expression of the body of Christ coming together, lifting one voice. If one could put a thousand to flight, two could put ten thousand. There's a kingdom principle, church, that when we come together in unity and we lend our voice together with one another in one voice, that's when things begin to shift and move. Amen? Amen. Allowing endurance, allowing the trials, allowing these things to forge us together. Turn quickly with me to Hebrews chapter 10, um, verse 35. Through 39, the word says this, Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. For you have need of endurance, 
so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. So think about this. You have need of endurance. You need to hang in there. Come on. In order to receive what God has promised. Don't quit, church. For yet a little while, and the coming one will come and will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith. And if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and, the, and uh, persevere, per, sorry, faith and preserve their souls, all right? We don't shrink back. Listen, when you feel like shrinking back, it's important that you've got some friends with you. No, 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 don't shrink back. That's why we build relationally. That's why we build generationally. So that when you feel like pulling back, you don't. Why? So that together we continue to press forward and receive the promises. Amen? If I'm telling you, church, it's the, the body of Christ is coming together in this hour. We may see a lot of the, 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 the disconnects that have happened in, in times past, but I'm telling you, God in his faithfulness is bringing the body of Christ together. She is going to walk without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And I'm telling you, this is what God is doing, even through the midst of the stuff we're experiencing in this time. God is still building his church. Amen? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 2 says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So, so I want us to, to really take a moment. I want us to read this scripture and break it down just a little bit. Therefore, since we are surrounded. Therefore, since we are surrounded. Let us lay aside every weight. Let us run with endurance. The race that is set before us. I'm telling you, one of the things that we have lost in our great nation that we live in is, is the idea of us. It is me, my dream, my destiny, my ministry, my pursuits, my, we have lost us. You know, even at the beginning of the Lord's Prayer, come on, it's not my Father <laughs> who art in heaven. It's our Father. And it's more than semantics. This is more than semantics. Therefore, let us run the race that is set before us. This isn't about your race. Mm. It's not about your race, your race, your race, your race, your race, your race, your, your race, your race. Let us run the race that is set, our race that is set before us. Those of us called to 68, we've got a race that is set before us. Those of us called to the body of Christ, we have a race that is set before us. Amen? It's not my race or your race. It's the race that is set before us. Man, you can only run the race set that is set before us when we're running with others. Not when we're separating ourselves. Not when we're pulling away from the house of God. Not when we're disconnecting from placement. Not when we're off pursuing our own thing, our own relationship with Jesus. And forsaking the placement of us. You and I were never designed, church, to go it alone. Even in the garden at creation, God said it's not good for man to be alone. God knew that at the foundation, at the very beginning when we showed up. Alone is, things get very interesting. Together, we can see some things. I, I did a funny little deal. I rewrote <laughs> for just the message. I didn't rewrite scripture, but I want us to read it. Uh, uh, written with, with the singular instead of us. Can you imagine opening up to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1? Therefore, since I am surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let me also lay aside every weight in the sin which clings so closely, and let me run with endurance the race that is set before me, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of my faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and the seat of the right. Doesn't that sound funny? And it sounds off, actually. But how often do we read scripture in light of me? We read promises in light of me. Church, the, the, maybe the church hasn't functioned as the church because we focus too much on the individual and, 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 and not really understanding that when God looks at you, he sees you 
in context of the body of Christ. He sees you in context of placement. You know, I know we say this a whole lot in the, the scripture in 1 Corinthians 12, 18, about God placing people in the body. God places the members in the body as he sees fit. I have to ask you again, are you placeable? And if you are placeable, are you immovable? Or when you go through a trial, are you going to be bumped? See, are, are, you going to, are you going to be placed and will you remain planted in the house of God? At an old age, I'm going to still bear fruit. Saints, I'm telling you, it, it really, I, I believe in my heart that one of the reasons that the body of Christ has lost her saltiness is because of the catering to the individual mindset and preaching a gospel that, 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 that is all centered on the individual and not centered on the Father's eternal purpose being established in the earth. Amen. And it's time for us to understand Scripture says, therefore let us run together. Therefore let us, our Father, amen, who art in heaven. You know, I I don't believe that we've gotten here overnight, and I do believe seeding messages like this. I'm telling you, we're going to keep doing it because it might be our kids or our grandkids or our great-grandkids, but but it's actually time to to begin to lift the lid and begin to speak to the body of Christ as God sees us in the name of Jesus. Amen. God in his goodness has placed us in the body of Christ that is to have an outworking in a local body of believers that delivers us from being the central figure in the story of our life. Ooh.